Right. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is the Book Asylum podcast. I'm Jack Childress. That's Kristen Vincent, poet, if you didn't know it. Jen Amato, potato, tomato, tomato. Are you fucking kidding me? She is in the house again. Dungeon Dan, always with the plan to derail the show. We'll see how that goes. My man kicking it from Puerto Rico, the one and only Angel Ramon. Absolute badass editor, unbelievable, top shelf human being, the one and only Doc Creed in the house. And this week, my buddy, my pal, the guy that got me my first kill, Lee Edwards, is popping on because he knows a little bit about today's guest. Introduce the guest for us there, Lee. Well, one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite people in the world, because I don't like very many people, is Rich Restucci's in the house. Yay! Wow. Yay. We're so glad to have you! It's so good to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, dude, so do we. How did it happen? How did you guys say, I want that moron on my show? How did that happen? It was a you lot of You lost 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 I got you. <laughs> have you seen the group that's in this right now? Hey, I you resemble the, that remark. Yeah, you see the secret is none of us are normal. Uh, oh, then I'll Not at all. Room. Well, speaking of not normal, um, you're no no stranger to this whole podcasting universe. Uh, you're part of the uh, Weird Realities crew. Um, correct. One of the weird kids. Uh, before we really get off into your writing, uh, drop a little uh, plug and where can everybody go find that? Oh uh, Yeah, so one of the things that, that I love to do is I love to do a little podcast called Watching Weird. And what we do is we dissect anything about movies, really. Um, recently, we've been doing pretty crappy movies. Uh, but we'll we'll step it up and we'll get into the good movies. But honestly, it's the crappy movies that, that you want to watch those shows because we tend to disagree. And when we disagree, we get at each other's throats. And that's when it's fun. That's where it gets fun. Uh, but I got to say something. Ten Eastern. I always put a, a list of movies for you guys to check out and you ignore the fuck out of me. Oh, it's not. <laughs> so we generally have stuff like a month in advance, two months in advance. <clears throat> but sometimes that falls away because... Um, what we've done in the past is we've we've asked you know the, the fans, the people that are on the show, what do they want to see, and they come up with some weird shit. I gotta tell you, they come up with some weird stuff. So sometimes we can do it. Sometimes you know you, you, you can't do Debbie Does Dallas. You 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 just can't. I mean, well, I no, you can, can but but you it's can. not it's not it's something not right that way. anybody's gonna watch with their kids running around behind them. And so we watch some I... nasty stuff. We watch some bloody gory stuff. And we watch mm -hmm. some bad stuff. But we watch good stuff too, you know. I mean, one of the one of the films we, if you if you guys happen to watch this past week, we uh, we did a bunch of great movies, and they were just fantastic. We've done stuff like Die Hard, we've done Lethal Weapon, we've done good things like that, um, and we've also done you know Thanks Killing and oh, bad yeah. and stuff like that too. So <laughs> that was tough to get through. Yeah, it, yeah. Now it, something it, I've I've noticed that y'all. Um, yeah the y'all do from time to time is try to find movies that one or more of you have never seen before. Like you yeah, have your recommendations. Yeah. That's hard to do, Jack. That's because, you know, we're all, you know, film files. We, we love to watch movies. Uh, and, and the thing is I'm an insomniac. I don't sleep and I don't do it so much every anymore, but I used to watch documentaries when I couldn't sleep. Now I just watch movies and I've been hmm. doing that for probably 15 years. So I'll get in, I'll get in 10, 12 movies a week. Well, I'm going to say that the odds of getting a negatory on this question are prob probably pretty slim, but on the line of bad movies, the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life, in fact, is uh, Ghosts of Sherwood Forest. Oh, God. Okay, I don't I've think seen I've that. Seen it. it sounds terrible. <laughs> it it is bad. terrible. It sounds like it's... a snoozer within five minutes. Sounds like five it... minute Jen is going to be making an appearance. Robin Hood <laughs> with <laughs> zombies. And Tom Savini is in it playing uh, a character. Yeah. Right, so that sounds bad you know, already. If you had not said that this was a bad movie, I, as soon as we were done, I would have queued that up. Because Robin Hood with zombies? Come on. Yes. Yes. And Robin. Okay. Uh, no spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, but I'm checking I, it I, out I right now. I, I was going to say, I this recommend checking. Good. Yeah. You should <laughs> definitely check it out. And then you can cuss me later. I tell you what, Rich. Five minute Jen introduced this whole group to a movie. I would love for you to, you guys, to put on your show. Okay, Sing zombie out. ass. 
Zombie oh, ass. ass. Zombie, zombie ass. ass. That. that is such. Oh, oh, I so refuse. Is it is it zombie ass toilet of the dead? Because I've seen. Yes. It. Yeah, yes. I've, I've seen that. That oh, doesn't have to go on the list. That's about as good as it sounds. Well, I thought uh, it was hilarious. It is funny. It is. But the thing is, <laughs> if you go into a film knowing that it, it's going to be that, then you're okay. If you go into a film and you're expecting, you know, an Oscar winner in a zombie movie, first of all, you got to be some kind of dumbass. Secondly, <laughs> <laughs> I could agree. There are yeah, absolutely on one hand movie. the amount of you know epic, fantastic zombie movies, and the rest of them are just extremely good. So, these guys out... made me watch Killer Clown. Love that That's movie. That's a good movie. Out of space. Yeah. yeah. Didn't like Never, it? Never, but no, no, I did not. And then I couldn't even finish Chud. <clears throat> oh my God. You know Jim? I, I did about eight five minute increments and I could not finish the movie. I was done. <laughs> I was done. Take away your B rated uh, horror card there then. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, and you know, I, I'm a B rated horror kind of gal. I don't mind it. You know, yeah. I watch stupid shit on Prime. But you hate and... every movie we tell you to watch. Because you guys are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's a, that. Uh, yeah. There's a part two to Chud called Bud the Chud. Oh, oh that God. wasn't the worst I've seen. It's um, not the worst. <laughs> no, it's, it's not, not good by any extent. Really we'll leave it at one. that. <laughs> yeah. So we started watching the new uh, Exorcist TV uh, last night. That's out on Peacock. Uh, the Exorcist, uh, I guess, Believer. Oh yeah. yeah, the new one. It came out, and I fell asleep through it. <laughs> I'm definitely going to sleep then. Yeah, I'm going to shock It's a given. I'm going to tell you, that was movie was not as bad as I expected. Really? That's still I mean, not a shining endorsement. It's not a, it, though, yeah, man. it's still a fucking polished turd, but. <laughs> it's polished at least. <laughs> it's got some shine turd. to it. <laughs> so I've got, I've got some, two things I want to bring out for Rich. Please do. First of all, I've um, noticed this on the other show and I'm looking at it now. You got some badass fucking models going on back there. Oh, that the Legos? Oh, are those Legos? Yeah, Damn, wow. those things wow. look good. Wow. You know, that was built by children and stuff. I didn't start building Lego till I was about fifty. No joke. Yeah. I'm fifty-five wow. right now. All that crap's been done in the past five years. But some I like of those, that. So those aren't actual Legos. Most of them. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> They're uh, knockoffs because, like, those cost you know eight hundred bucks to buy. You know from lego so i just that's I insane ones. yeah oh yeah oh it goes how much higher than that oh, yeah. yeah it's crazy yeah. they're legos i was that's thinking they were just cool. model kits and even that oh. those are going to be super expensive yeah no those those are mostly legos yeah those uh, things are huge uh yeah some of them nebula and b frigate uh that was that one right there it's a venator class uh cruiser destroyer whatever uh -huh. but I bought that one brick at a time, pieces, and I put it together with a, uh, an on. It was an MOC, and so it was an online um, instruction manual. And I built so, that something that took about a month. I was going to say, so how excruciating was it trying to, you know, you get a piece, you put a piece on, and you go. Oh, okay. I got the pieces and I put them in a box, and I waited until I had them all, and then I built it. Well, actually, wow. I, I did it in, in about a stage and a half. It was, it, it, I, I got to a point and then I had some personal tragedy so I moved on and then I went back to it later on so mm -hmm. I don't know looking at those models I just think I've been living your life all wrong <laughs> you know yeah. you, Dan, you have you talking about I tend to agree. models in the background I'm like watching weird has models I'm uh, thinking yeah, no it's you know, you're, I'm you're, you're, you're right there with me Lee we're like a poor brothers right no, well, there's only so much money you can buy, and so when you run out of money, you got to do something else. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, excuse me. I don't know. I was gonna. I was gonna say, man, you're you're always sporting this like I cruise life, hair slicked back, got the Rick Baker vibe going. Is, I mean, is that just you normally, or like you do spend an hour in front of the mirror doing yourself up? Oh. Hell no. No. <laughs> well, it's still back, but that's because of this. A lot of people don't know that that's there. You know, there's uh, I, I've I've noticed it. That's where I did the Rick Baker reference. Yeah, I'm so oh, no. jealous of that. No, I, yeah. I, 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 I get up and I'm 
I don't know, six minutes in the shower and I'm out. I drag a comb through it and I go to work. Ah, such a diva. I'm 30 seconds done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's sex. Forget it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, on there went a wheel. <laughs> okay. Okay. Starting to fly. Here we go. We're I'll, I'll early. go ahead and get us back running. on track. Oh, yeah, we're starting early. We're only like 15 <laughs> minutes in, guys. <laughs> we, were, we, were know. Off. we were only on like five, maybe four wheels coming into this thing anyways. Pretty so. much. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, we'll catch us up real quick on um catch us up real quick on a couple comments out here. Um Anthony said uh sorry that he's not here. He's out trying to get a new car. Can't fault him for that. Make yep. sure it's a Ford. Don't buy no damn bow tie. Ew. What? Oh, Bound on road dead? What the fuck's wrong with you, Tennessee? Oh, boy? Jack. oh. oh my god. Years, one truck, Jack. Nineteen Jack. years, man. one truck. You disappoint me, man. Yeah, they don't make them years and now $2 million dollars later. like they used to. And even back then, the Fords were still shit. No wonder where all your hair went, Jack. You drive a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack, you disappoint me, man. It's probably Chevy or something, you know? You see what yeah, I got to put up with? I've been driving a Dodge Ram for 20 years. Oh, Jack, man. I am not going to hold your picture up one-handed anymore. Even a Nissan would be better, man. <laughs> oh shit! Damn. You guys Shots remember fired. the old Hugo's? <laughs> the exploding oh. car? Yeah, we know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. Thought about getting a gremlin. Anyway, back to the comments over here. <laughs> Pete, you are a gremlin. A gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> a gremlin drives a gremlin. <laughs> so Anthony also said, uh, "Sweet Star Wars models, Rich. Uh, y'all know what's coming now. Carl Meadows is watching. Yep. Of course." Oh. Oh, oh God! Go. Don't don't do it, Jack. First, uh, hi, Carl. We love you. Sorry. <laughs> we, we, we apologize for Jack. One, two, three. Break out the tea and crumpets. It's time to get some biscuits and have us a lovely, jolly, good old time. Oh, Hello, man. Carl. Oh, that was bad. Oh, Carl Meadows. That's Very bad. Terrible. I'm no good at it. That's uh-huh. that's why I do it. Carl and I are actually in a book together. Yeah, we, uh, we mm-hmm. both have a uh, story in one of Chris Philbrook's uh, anthologies. Really? Nice. Oh. 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 Uh, was it? Um, Dead lucky. Crap. Yes, yes, yes. I I listened to that one and I heard your story in that. Man, everyone that put something in that one did a great job. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. That was uh, that was great. Chris is actually a great author too. So is Carl. Carl's excellent with his Locky stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love Locky. Love Locky. Yeah, I've got. Awesome. She's back here and up there. In fact, that's her right there. She's right beside you. In yeah, fact, oh, right. yep, she's right there beside you. So yeah, I love Carl's stuff, man. He yeah, is yep. brilliant. But when we're going to talk about brilliant writers, let's start talking a little bit more about your books. Out of your series, have you had any characters that you could like totally relate to with yourself personally? Like you're writing them and you're like, man, I'm writing a lot of myself into this person. Or do you tend to write opposites? So, about that. I'm fucking funny, all right? I'm a funny person. Okay. So, I tried to make... We'll backtrack first. First book I wrote was my run book. And it was actually just the first half of that book. And I wrote that when I was 17 years old. <clears throat> and I wrote that with a pen on, in a notebook. And it was during class when I was bored. I would just freaking write that story. That went into a box in my parents' garage. And there it sat until... 2014 maybe 2014 oh, I, w- I was you know I was at work and um, towards the end of the day after work I would just start I went on this this website I can't remember the name of the website but it had tons and tons of zombie stories I started reading those and I was like I could write that and then I went and I found that book that notebook and I put it on I put that story <coughs> excuse me on the website, everybody, everybody said, oh, my God, that's great. you gotta, you got to be a writer, do all this stuff. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> and so once that had been published, that was run, and that exploded. I, I hit a niche genre at exactly the right time. I was selling like 200 books a day. It was fantastic. Wow. I have no hit, nothing like that hit since then. Run still towers over everything else. But the, the main character who does not have a name for then that's there's a reason to that, but I can't tell you. Um, that is, I sort of base a lot of his exploits off of me because he and I share one quality and that's stupidity. We're both idiots. 
So he <laughs> loved that he grew up. Uh, had, he was a, he, well, we don't share this in common. He was a, a criminal. He's a prisoner, a uh, convict. And they let him out, you know, zombie apocalypse. They let him out. And it's just how he learns how to live as he goes. See, my other run, when I wrote that, they were all badasses from the get-go. He was a, there were cops and there were soldiers and stuff like that. This guy's just a, a, a dumb schmuck. Well, actually, he's not dumb. He's very intelligent. Something else we don't share because, again, I'm an idiot. But he's, he's super smart, but he's also he doesn't know how to do anything. So people think he's an idiot. And he's also extremely full of himself. So that's I, – I kind of wrote that guy based on some of the things that I have seen, some of the things that I said you know what, that would look good in a movie, or in this case, a book. So I stuck it in there, and, and that's him. Uh, and his his best friend, Ship, that was just, that, I got that you know, flying by the seat of my pants. He's a, a seven-foot-tall, you know, three-feet-wide, huge, gigantic genius. Uh, and the reason I wrote, initially I had, you know, verbiage and dialogue for him, and I was like, wait a minute, what if he couldn't tell the main character that there were bad guys over there? And that's what I what drove me crazy about the book. I'm like, this guy's so stinking smart and he can't say a damn thing. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Uh, it looks like it worked. It, <laughs> it worked. did. It did. <laughs> it <worked. laughs> Good. So like your question, Jack. Kind of. BT. What's that, Lee? I said I'd like to see a ship versus BT. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Two goes <rolls> BT. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a hell of a throwdown. Hell, throw your baby yeah. on in there. We'll just make it a fatal three way there and just let them go at it. Yeah. You know, while we're talking about run, uh, and, and I feel bad because I finished this book early in the week and I moved on to a different one. And so I, there's a character that caught my eye in that particular book. I'm going to go back to the run series, by the way. I just, I want to jump over to a different one, but I think his name was Billy. Yeah. Yeah. That's who I thought Rich was going to say that he wrote after him. No. Yeah, so, see, I was expecting that too. I was all like, "Dude, you <laughs> fucked up." Oh, so, Billy was an accident. Love Billy. He Billy was, was uh, an accident. Yeah, was Billy. That that just kind of came about. Billy's batshit crazy, but he's not the evil person that everybody thinks he is. He got locked up because people thought he was a murderer, um, and he is a murderer. But he didn't do what they thought he did. Right. So, but he only kills people who need killing. Billy does. Uh, uh -huh. And like I said, Billy was. He, he was not in the first part of the book. That He was not in the book that I wrote, you know, as a 17-year-old. Yeah. He came about just by accident. And, and it was me sitting there thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, just got over COVID, everybody. Sorry about the cough. All good. That was just me sitting there thinking, what kind of mayhem could I cause right now? And I was like, how about a whack job who the dead don't want to eat? <laughs> he could go in there and indiscriminately just bash the crap out of these things. And so I did that. And and I was like, oh, I, I kind of fell in love with him pretty quick. He was uh, my favorite character. I, was like, I appreciate yeah. that. And then I'm in there and I'm like, now what would make this even scarier? You know, Billy's in there and none of these dead want to attack him. How about something that does want to attack him? So then I, I concocted the whole not dead infected type of thing. And they're fast. Yeah. So, and that came about, you know, the speedy, not dead infected who, you know, just want to just eviscerate you and play hopscotch with your small intestine. And then mm -hmm. you kill one of them and then they get back up as a dead one. I was like, oh, let's try that. And that worked out. People seem to really dig that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I like this character because he, he spends most of the first book. He's just cruising through the apocalypse. Yeah. And all of his that inner was, dialogue was doing, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was his plan. Was exactly that. Dan was to cruise <laughs> through the apocalypse. But the thing with Billy is, I had no idea people were going to love that character with the way they did. And so, I don't want to wreck it for you, but the whole second book, Billy's not in it. He's not in the uh. whole book. There's a, and there's reasons for that too. I had no idea once I wrote the second book before I published the first one. Okay. And then I published the first one, and like I said, it exploded. Definitely by far mm -hmm. my my best seller still uh again niche genre at exactly the right time i just mm -hmm. i was very fortuitous with that uh, and it was a time when people were buying books too so that people aren't mm -hmm. buying books like they used to no but, uh, no you'd think with covid running around nobody's got anything to do they'll sit down and read a book but 
floor, the sales went through the floor for everybody, which it was just weird. Well, I mean, I think a lot of that though was a lot of people nowadays are you know on PlayStation and Xbox, yep. and yep. you know yes. you got your you got your little games in your hand and all that, and it's not like it was back in the old days, you know, when you had maybe an Atari twenty six hundred sitting around, but Atari. I'm old. Kiss my yeah. ass. So am I. I know what it is. I'm just saying that was the yeah, one you Jack. went with. <laughs> now, Chris, I, know, I know the answer to this because me and you've talked about it, but why is it that run for other people? Why didn't run two or three ever get onto Audible? So I was contacted, but well, my first thing is I'm not an indie author. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Uh, I was contacted by a publisher and they, and they asked me, you know, do you want us to publish your book? And that, that was actually a short story. And I said, yeah, of course I want you to publish my book. So they did. <laughs> so then I was like, well, that was easy. So when Run was done and I want to publish it, I sent it to Permuted Press, right? The, they were the premier post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic zombie press in the world. Biggest one out there. And they were like, you know what, Rich? No, we don't want your stupid trash. Take it elsewhere. <laughs> oh, so then, you know, you know, tear in my eye. I was like, okay. So I contacted this other place, Seven Press. And he's like, yeah, send it to me. I send it to him. He's like, I love it. Like, when can we publish? And I was like, wait a minute. You're going to publish my book? Really? What does that mean? And he's like, what do you mean? What does it mean? You wrote the book. We're going to publish it. I was like, okay. <laughs> the next day it was out there. It took like two weeks, really. And then it was out there. I was like, oh. And I thought, I thought it would sell two copies, you know, me and my mom. Yeah. And, uh, again, very fortunate. Hit hit the perfect timing for for that. So it, it was it was really great, and it, it worked out well. So, well, hey, in defense of myself, uh, real quick, uh, George De Costa said he still has his Atari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let him get down on Hi, you about George. the Atari. I had one. <laughs> I had one too. I'm just saying that was the one you went with, not like a PlayStation or well, that's the one a that Sega Genesis or anything or a Nintendo yeah. 64. That's too easy, man. You got to go vintage. Well, yeah, the baby yeah. the fruit there, Question which is, translates to affordable. You, you yeah. might as well have just said Commodore 64, where you had to program in everything on your own. Yeah, there we go. I never, I never had that one. I never. Oh, had that. I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have oh, yeah. Coleco either. Used to used to get the magazines where you could program in all yes. your games and all that good stuff. Yeah, but he still has one. Has he has he used it in the last year or two? Well, he's watching. He'll we can wait for an answer here in a <laughs> he little bit. Might be. <laughs> I mean, and make I a, uh, Stephen um, Weller is also on. Hi, Steve. <laughs> What's he up, said, Steve? "I have an urge to play pong." Pong, <laughs> yeah, classic, right? Yeah. Classic. I pong. mean, okay, going along this this kind of this same vein, you know, with with the characters, as you were developing them, how many times did you like go to traits of yourself where, like, you're into gaming or into whatever to get like that fine tuning of the character where it wasn't just a broad, okay, they're crazy, but <laughs> all right. I, I steal people. I will take someone, you know, my son, a guy at work, some guy that pissed me off when I was at the gas station, and I will put them into the book. And so far as me, not really. Um, the The main character in the theory series, he's loosely based on someone I could be, but he's not, that's not me. Um, but every now and then, Jack, I'll, I'll I'll steal something from someone else. I'll, I'll take a trait that I see of them and I'll put it either on an existing or a new character. New characters okay. are fun, fun to play with, but the problem is when you have too many characters in a book, you, you, you're turning yourself into Game of Thrones. You're, you know, George Martin. Yeah. And, I, and I, you, I, can't, you can't remember who's who. Even the writer uh, can't remember who's who a lot of the time. Yeah. So you you, gotta, you she... gotta cut them out and just kill them fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a character that I absolutely loved. His name was Tim, and he's in—he's uh, sort of a computer nerd that was stuck in this underground facility, and the dead are running around, and it's just him, and he—and he can't—he can't—he's trapped. Uh, and then the main character comes in, and he sort of saves him, and they become pals, and they escape this facility together. It was Baldy Mountain in Montana, by the way. <laughs> Excuse me. And they get out, and I was like, I really love that character, Tim. And he made it through that book, and then he got halfway through the next book, and I'm like, 
I'm looking at Tim. He doesn't really fit here. It's like, and then he was gone. Time to kill Tim. Yeah. So uh, it's it's that kind of thing. It's sometimes you you add traits to a character wherever you can find the traits from. Not necessarily from yourself, although you can do that too. I've and I have done that as well. But from I like I said, I steal from other people. I'll, I'll grab that guy's trait and this guy's trait and just apply it in either a funny or an evil manner to whatever character I'm working on at the time. Yeah, I fell in love with Tim and I could tell when you did. Yeah. That was because I, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, Tim. And then he was gone. And then, like you said, all of a sudden he's back on. And I'm like, oh, they killed Tim. <laughs> I can't believe he killed Tim. But that is I mean, that is actually the the wonderful thing. Lee is in my third book. And he's dead too. <laughs> oh, <poor laughs> he, he asked for it. <laughs> he had a very decent life <laughs> palling around with my people for a little bit until he got, you know, dead. Right. dead. But <laughs> got dead. Got dead. Got dead. But uh, you know, he, he, I love when people, you know, you put out that blanket statement. I don't know if you ever have put out that blanket statement on like Facebook or something. Hey, any of my buddies want to die in a book? I did that recently, yeah. and I have three <laughs> pages of people who are like, "Yes, me, please." <laughs> well, you remember Everybody when we would do die. it? We remember when Every- we would do it for uh, Jeff's for uh, Jeff. Jeff Thompson's epic mayhem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. We would get people that he'd already killed in the series. How the going, hell did yeah, Angel die eight times? <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah, he, he, he's young. He, he, yeah. he must have had a crush on me or something. Yeah, cloning, on it, cloning in the twenties, man. Cloning. He had figured out. Yeah, um, man. Oh my god. Uh, I got a. I, I got a in Jeff's book because me and him, you know, would stay up on. And I always told him how to like the, uh, Death of the Week on, uh, oh my God, what's the name of that movie now? Oh, Zombie Land. Zombie Yeah, Land. yeah, yeah, yeah. With Zombie me, Kill of the Week, yeah. He killed the piano, and that's how he killed me. With a piano. <laughs> now, now, Rich, I got a question. I got an interesting one for you, Rich. Uh, out, out of all the books and series you've written, which one was your absolute favorite? Or do you have a favorite? Angel, I could no sooner choose a favorite star in the heavens. I love like them all. Oh like my have, God! Like Calm like down, your Jesus show. Christ! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can out of the Bible. For me to take, to take this thing out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So honestly, my favorite story. Uh huh. It's a tough one, I know. It was, it was a little. <laughs> it's, story that I wrote. It, it's, not, it's not a book. It, it's a it's a short story in an anthology. I write for anthologies all the time. And okay. It was a short story that I wrote for an anthology about a guy that was locked in a mental institution and he had a demon in him, but he had to let the demon out in order for the demon to take over. And so, you know, the guards and one of the doctors were not nice to him and he would let the demon out and the demon just freaking ate everybody. (laughs) On the toilet pooping and he's like, why is there a shoestring in the toilet? That type of thing. So I really enjoyed that. And that was another, you know, another comical thing. For me. I can't remember what anthology that went into. I got 50 of them over there. No, it's, don't bunch. tell us because now yeah. everyone's going to go out and buy all the anthologies. Yeah, just yeah, to find that we'll one. Just find, find that it. one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's getting marketing. It, it's a treasure hunt. You've got to go find the X. Where is yeah, the X? Well, okay. When, you, when you, what? you get the X, you yeah, you uh-huh. win. <laughs> but don't tell nobody. <laughs> That's the whole key. Well, okay, I'm gonna piggyback off what Angel just asked, and I'm gonna ask you this: What is the which of your series of all the books, all the short stories, all the anthologies, everything? Which one was the hardest to write? Which one mm. fought you the most? Good question. Oh, okay. So I wrote. I don't know if you guys know this, but COVID got my wife a couple of years ago. She passed away. Yes, uh, yes, yes. And I wrote a story and I sort of folded that in there. I didn't put her name in there, but I definitely grabbed the sadness of, of that entire you know, escapade mm-hmm. of my life. And that that was really difficult to write. But at the same time, the story came out great. And I honestly believe that she helped me write that story. So that was that was probably the most yes. difficult. 
Wow, man, Dave, that's that's powerful. I was almost expecting a, it is, you know, a kind of a funny, you know, response to that one. But man, dude, and again, man, much love sent, man, much love sent. You know, that's thank you. That's what's up, man. That's tough. That's seriously. But you tough. got it out there, man. That's what counts, man. You got it out there. That's what's yep. up. Yep, 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 yep. Well, let me ask you this: uh, Do you have any authors? You know, obviously, you know, King is on the list. We gotta, yada, yada. but. And I know you don't yada 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 king, whatever. But who are some of your biggest inspirations and what are some works of theirs that you would recommend to others to go check out, especially if they're wanting to write? All right. So I, I can I can give you the standards. I can give you, you know, JL Bourne. Anything by JL Bourne is fantastic. Uh, I, I don't know if I, I kind of wrote my stuff before I read his stuff. Mm -hmm. So my inspirations. I didn't really get get into, you know, all of the zombie stories and books that that you'll see behind me, and you know, I have another two shelves upstairs, until probably mid two thousands, probably 2010, 2012. Um, but since then, I've read probably a thousand books, and guys like Sean Chesser and Mark Tufo and and Alan Gamboa, W. J. Lundy, Joe Hansen. Guys like that, just phenomenal writers. Angel, I've read some of your stuff. It, it, it's, it's good. It's really good. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. <coughs> uh, but my all-time favorite, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of Alan Gamboa. I, I, I know oh, he's yeah, Alan Gamboa. Gamboa. Yeah, he's the man. He's up there. He's a great, great author, you know. And Scott Baker. Yes, uh, Scott yeah, Scott Baker. Doesn't Scott this Scott Baker. Stuff. Listen Stephen this. Knight was my first when I got back into oh, reading. Plus. Stephen Knight's uh, Gathering oh, Horde series was yeah. the first Zomba oh, books that I read. And right. that, Ted it's... Nolte was my first yeah. Zomba author that I had read, and I fell in love with his books. Mm -hmm. His okay. and and that's how I actually got I I got introduced to these people here at the written undead um from my friend mary who helped javin with a lot of, with his uh yes i remember a that fundraiser a few years yes. ago i got to actually talk to angel angel mm -hmm. introduced me to jack it was you know but yep. ted nolte was mm -hmm. the guy who i first read to get me into this genre because i was dean coon psycho thrillers all the way mm -hmm. yeah but, for me it was too though it was you know, hundred percent tufo friend. When I was in the hospital and couldn't go anywhere, I was ICU, and uh, he, I was just bored. He was like, "Dude, you ought to check out this Mark Tufo. He's got, you know, his first book in his series is free right now." You know, and I'm like, "Oh." And they showed me how to get it downloaded, and I got it and read the first two or three, and then discovered, "Oh wait, I can listen to it." Are you <laughs> kidding me? Boom! Hit that button, you know, and. I've been hooked ever since, you know. It's like a drug. It is. It is. It is. Did I did I hear correctly that not all of your books are on Audible, Rich? Yeah. So, and that was I think that was Lee's question that I just went off on my own tangent there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. um, That's okay. <laughs> we do it all the so time. I get in bed with Tantor. They actually Tantor Media is a they make their they make audiobooks. Right. Um, yes. and they bought and run. And they gave me this huge advance to, to do run. I was like, wow, this is great. And it, and it was right around the time where it, everything had exploded. Yeah. Um, and then when I published the theory series, they grabbed the first three books and it was done by what the legendary Michael Kramer. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's, he's phenomenal. He's, he did the wheel of time, Dune, stuff like that. Uh, and those, those books I listened to when I was like, how can he tell the book better than I wrote it? <laughs> and he does. He's just phenomenal. Um, but then the second I, I got in touch. Uh, so like I said, I'm in bed with Tantor and uh, I have a contract with them and I can't go anywhere else until the contract mm -hmm. expires. And I don't know when that is, but I don't think it's soon. <clears throat> and um, I think it's seven and years. I, so it, it was seven years, but then I re-upped it. So it's it's another oh. seven. Oh, but no. um, could be, yeah, there was a, a, a little bit of a monetary deal in there. So I was like, stupid uh -huh. not to hear about that. But I actually sent them a request to to get you know the second and third run done, and I they never got back to me. So then I actually had asked my publisher to do it, and I guess they didn't get back to him either. So they must oh, just not want it. 
uh, and that's oh, that's fine. It's whatever. Probably gonna be too good for them. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I guess I don't know what their costs are, but I just can't see that they wouldn't make the money back because a lot of people are asking for it, you know. And I, right. I, I don't know if, how many it takes to overcome whatever their, you know, whatever to recoup their costs. I have no idea. I mean, but they traditional, just, I don't know. Yeah. traditional publishers are different animal, though. So mm-hmm. exactly. When you know, and the thing is about it. Uh, with with us being more travely nowadays, you know, out on the road zipping and running, and you know, like people with long commutes to go to work and all that, a lot of people like me, well, especially now that my eyes have gotten a little worse, we don't read as much, but we still love the products, and then we go look for it on Audible. We go look for it where we can listen to it, and as I've always said, man, you get a great narrator to read a book. They could take a good book and make it great. I mean, it it literally does happen. Like the characters come more alive. Mm-hmm. I agree. So yeah, that freaking sucks because I would love to be able to listen to the whole run series. You know, well, like I do everything else. I spoke to Michael Kramer. I actually spoke to him ab- about doing, you know, that I would pay for to pay for him to do the run. But the thing is, he's very expensive. To the point where I simply couldn't do it. There are others that I could get, and I'm thinking, yeah, well, I got this guy and I got that guy, but Michael is just, he's hes on a level that's just above everyone yeah. else. Well, and I the thing is, too, with it. that, when you switch uh, narrators, yeah, uh, when, you, when, you, yeah. when you switch narrators, I mean, Chris ran into this, Chris Philbrook, mm-hmm. during yeah. the Adrian's Undead Diary yeah. series, he had to switch narrators. Yeah. And the next one was okay. He was he's close, but it's still not the same. Exactly. And I, you know, it's it's man, it's a rough world out there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Michael Kramer did he didn't do David Drummond also works for Tantor. He did the first run book. Mm-hmm. Michael Kramer did the first three series books or theory series books. Sorry. Um, and then the fourth series book. Geez, I keep saying series. The fourth <laughs> series book in the series. That was done by another another person. <clears throat> excuse me, and I don't know who that is. And I, I actually got some kickback on that. A lot of people said, "Yeah, he was good. He's just not Michael Kramer." And that's the truth. He's he's not Michael Kramer. So yeah. Uh, well, I mean, again, think of uh, Zombie Fallout. If Sean Renette is suddenly replaced by John Tompkins, oh, you know, it's be mayhem. Like, you know, it's not going to make any sense anymore. Right. You guys, have you guys listened to the Book of Riley? I, those I haven't because I have a I hard time started. giving up. I haven't been able to bring myself to give up a credit for something that's so short. short. Yeah, so short. Yeah, no, that yeah. I understand. The, the guy that does that is really good. He does, uh, ben Ben's uh, voice is <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> See, now I'm going to wind up spending a credit on it because I hadn't had heard any. Yeah, I'm sorry I did it. that to you, Jack, but you know what? It's worth it just okay. because the story is excellent, but it is short. It's, it, 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 you're right, it is short. So that's one of my next credits is going to go. I think I'm on. I would be on the fifth book. I think. Okay. So, I right. damn it. I'm sold. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's great. It's worth it. You know, it's too fun. So it's yeah. worth yep. it. He you doesn't know, write. Just, he doesn't know how to write crap. So everybody message Tufo to give us a package deal, and I'm sure it'll happen. Right. I mean, look at all these smiling, happy faces. Right. Yeah, right. Absolutely, get this no. thing done. Yeah. All right. Well, Once let's I... move on now to uh, your other series. Uh, give us the breakdown. Like, uh, essentially, give us a verbal blurb. Oh, which one are we doing? Are we doing run? Or are we doing the theory series? Uh, theory. So, uh, <clears throat> starts on a prison bus coming from Massachusetts, going to Rhode uh, Yeah, Rhode Island. From Massachusetts going up to New Hampshire. Uh, things that have already fallen apart, zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the main character is fixing a, a vehicle. He, the buses have stopped. He's fixing a vehicle. He's a convict. Uh, they let the you know the, the non-horrible convicts out. <clears throat> and he gets bitten. Um, and so everybody's like, you know, they're pointing the guns at him and stuff like that. They're like, yeah, you're not coming with us. And he understands. He gets it because he, everybody knows now, you, you know, you're bitten and you're screwed. Uh, they all leave him there. Starts to snow. And he's like, he's got a, he's got a handgun. And he's like, wow, I'm screwed. Uh, and then he doesn't die. He actually gets better. So now we have something that is taboo in the, uh, in the zombie world. 
and that's someone who's immune because mm-hmm. uh, you just don't get that in this in the zombie apocalypse and and that's what i wanted to do and i understood that i was going to piss people off and i was like you know what good let them be pissed let them keep reading and they'll like the story and they did which was good so that blossoms into a guy that meets up with ship who is a um a sort of a survivalist he lives by himself he's a mute he's a gigantic seven foot four guy um huge all muscle but he's also a genius he knows everything about everything not not just like super smart an actual genius like wrote physics books and stuff like that textbooks so their crap falls apart when a bunch of a bunch of evil rednecks come to kill them and they run and they're traveling across the the country and stuff like that and one thing leads to another and they meet up with this uh i, I guess you can call him an agency spook in tennessee and that guy realizes that the main character is immune and you know bells go off in his head and he's like that guy needs to get experimented on we need to figure out all of this and so the rest of the story is about you know the u.s government or the remnants of it trying to catch this guy and they actually do they get him on an oil rig in the gulf of mexico they catch him there they bring him up to baldy mountain that we discussed before start running the experiments on him this is now the second book and of course, you know you can't run experiments without having zombies. You need so you need to test the zombies too. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. So they they fill the place with <clears throat> with the dead, and shockingly, they break out, kill everybody. He gets out of the mountain. That's where he meets Tim. Um, then they go out, and they're I can't remember where they were. They were they were someplace, and, and they meet up with a group of uh, of badasses. And Remo is one of the badasses. And I actually based that character on my friend James Jackson, who is, uh, he lives out in Washington State. If he is so, a quarter of badass uh, that that guy <laughs> Remo is, oh my God. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I don't we'll, want to we'll meet where him. we are right now, and I'll tell you guys something else. J.R. Jackson, he is one of the best zombie writers you'll ever read. He's, he's got, his stuff is very little known which is a shame because it's excellent. So I'm going to give him a plug right now. J.R. Jackson, and it's the Up From the Depth series. Do I have one right here or is it upstairs? I think I keep that near my heart because I love it so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Kristen, uh, you keep up down here. He's got Kristen, like eight or nine books in the series, and, uh, and it's phenomenal. But anyway, well, Chris, Kristen, on, get his, get his name down so we can get him on the show so he's not yeah, as little. He will he will not come I on just, yourself. I just will he not? It in. No, I just put because it in there. he's um he's very he's me on a on a hundred times higher level insofar as security and and that type of thing. He, uh, he will, I'm telling okay. you straight up, he won't come on the show. But buy his oh, book because okay. his books are great. You will love his books, and they are epic too. I put his name in the comments so that if anybody wants to go look him up, J.R. Jackson is in the comments. Definitely look him up. Yeah. Great, great stories. But anyway, after after they meet Remo, um, they just go and they start basically killing everything, blowing everything up. Government's still chasing them. And that's kind of where we are right now. And this will this I'm on book five right now. I'm about 70,000 words into book five. And I'm wow, going to nice. about 80, 85. So excited. <laughs> now, uh, the big question is, um, do you have an end already? Like, you're stopping at book blah, and it ends here. First no. of all, I want to say shut your whore mouth, because yeah. there is no end. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> no. But the fact is, Jack, that I, I don't get the time to write that I used to get. Uh, okay. Always, always busy. Uh, now I'm I'm a single dad running, you know, this place, so it's it's difficult to do. Uh, I used to do a lot of my writing at work at lunch hour, you know. I and sometimes I get like two thousand words uh, in an hour, which I just wow. fly across the keys, and then the next day I get eight words in an hour. So it's <laughs> up, it's yeah. up and down, and it's just and that's unfortunately the way it is. I'd like to be able to write more. Uh, and if I were to write more, I know this is going to sound dumb. If I was too able, if I was able to write more, I would probably end the series after like maybe eight books and just go in a different direction. I have I have lots of ideas, <clears throat> but um, so right now, no, I, I don't see an end to that to that story. But 
then again, I might get bored and end it tomorrow. Maybe, maybe Thank the main the character will get killed. You tomorrow. shut your mm-hmm. horror mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice, sir. I want a t-shirt. Shut your horror mouth. I will make one. <laughs> she will. She that will do that. Great. So That's I would so like awesome. to know if you have ever written just a standalone. Not a novel, um, but I started. <clears throat> so I have these behind me here, these Gates of Hell books that mm-hmm. I did. And I, I wrote a story about, uh, I, I kind of started in the middle. <clears throat> and it was about this guy whose daughter had a fever and he had to go out, out into, you know, shockingly with me, a post-apocalyptic world. But the apocalypse comes from creatures that live inside shadows. Uh, and the shadow creatures can reach out and grab you and pull you into the shadow, and then nobody can see you anymore, but they can just hear you screaming and all that. So you don't really know what's going on in there. So I wrote that story, and then I was like, you know what? I really like this story. So then I wrote another one and another one. So there's three in there, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that into a novel. Because mm. uh, uh-huh. people okay. tend to really enjoy that, right. too. I would oh, I definitely like, enjoy that. Yeah, I like that idea. Yep. Yeah, blend yeah. just blend them all together and make it a full length. Absolutely. I really freaking get, I really get into the um the stories where it's like I don't know where it started and I don't know how to fix it and I don't know how to protect us from it because yeah. that's like that is like the, the oh hell. they flashed it. You saw that. I hope somebody got a it. screenshot. <laughs> I can do it again. I can. You know I love flashing people so. <laughs> yeah. Dirty boy, yeah, dirty, man. dirty boy. boy. Naughty. Yeah. So if so I was to write a book on it, it would be called Gloom, because that's Oof. the name of the first short story. <laughs> okay, and, uh, okay. It, it, nice. people, people dug it, so and it, that's my favorite story. You know, I, I'm going to be remiss if I don't get this question out there. It's something I actually. It's a question I discovered I've never <laughs> thought to ask before, but probably should have been from day one. Um, obviously, on this screen, you've got some like newbie writers Mm -hmm. established writers you got an editor out here you got different people in different mindsets you having written for a little while now a little while um what's some advice you would give to someone who's thinking Uh, about writing i mean but 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 you can't just do the just go write because that's the straightforward answer no easy answers yeah this is one like help an aspiring writer okay so the first thing i want to say is exactly what you just said i want to say should i get off the pot don't think about it just do it and you don't have to write something for someone else write it for you Mm. write it such that Ah, you would really like it write a story that you would love and don't get me wrong just because you love it doesn't mean everybody else isn't going to hate it and think it sucks but who cares (laughs) write that for you and you take that story and you say you know what let me turn this into this one, and then you start writing another one that is a book that you want to publish. Or however long it takes you to get there, do it. The thing that I regret the most about you know writing, if you can call me an author, is that I, I didn't start until I was almost 50. I started in 2015, yes. and I know that's a lot of math from 1968, but I was friggin' old. <laughs> so yeah. I really wish that I had started earlier, because had I started earlier, I'd have a ton more books out there, you know? Yeah. Well, it also wasn't as easy as it is now to publish because I Agreed. also wanted Absolutely to agree. be an author since well, I was a teenager and I didn't do it till 45. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was well, about the same age, Jen. There was something called, I, I'm going to get a little bit off topic. There was something called a, a, a Kindle, the KDP Gold Rush, the 2011, 2012, when you could just stick a book up there and you make, you make money hand and fist. There was a Gold Rush period. And I kind of do, and I kind of do feel on which is uh, with Grace of Not Starting Earlier, and I, I could have tapped into that little gold rush they had because it is a little tougher now to get wake out and get out there. It is tougher now. I will say that. That's a good point. Very true. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very I, true I, I kind of dig into the past of KDP and all that and Amazon, and, you know, because uh, I, I don't know if you're a real witch. Uh, back back in the two, 2012. And a Kindle Amendment, you know, all, all somebody had to do was read ten percent of your book, and you get paid a flat fee. You know, you get paid for the whole oh, book. Right. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, I had I the mean, moment in time. Insofar as your your initial question, Jack, I would just say do that. Um, 
you, you really should just write something, anything. And it, and it doesn't have to be in whatever genre you're going to write. Write poetry. Write, you know, a letter to someone who doesn't exist. Write whatever you want. <clears throat> and once you get a feel for it, <clears throat> and you realize it's not impossible to do. It's actually anybody can write, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just it, the challenge in that is actually turning it into a finished product. That, um, that right there, yes. right there. Yep. And see, I've so been. Um, not, that's why you need a good something. editor. I was going to exactly. say, that, that's, that's, that's why you go to Doc. That's, that's why you call that. Say, this is not a journey you can go on alone. It's really, really, I mean, no, you can do it, but it's going to make it a thousand times harder. Get friends, <laughs> get somebody like Doc to edit to edit your stuff. Because however good you think you are, an editor is going to make you better. So, And it can't right. be you. Every time I write a story, I read it. And I, I'll, I'll write like, you know, 30 pages and then I'll read those 30 pages. And I've never, not once ever, not found some kind of typo or something I wanted to change, even after I've read it two or three times. And mm -hmm. then when I'm done so with me, it's a little different. Uh, I actually have an editor that works for my publisher. So mm -hmm. I send my book to them. But well, actually, before it even gets there, I'll send it to you guys. I'll send it to a few beta readers and say, read this. Right. Find me things. I'm not necessarily worried about grammar. I'm worried about this sucks. That doesn't work. Why did this happen? That type of thing. Mm -hmm. Tell me that. And then I will send it to the editor. The editor goes over it, gives me a, a manuscript back with a lot of red dots in there. <laughs> uh, I fix all the red dots and send it back to them, and then they publish it. <laughs> the so, damn red pen, man. The yeah. damn red pen. Well, I'm going to tell you, like said, this is why what? I love having Doc on the show because she's the one that actually sees the other side of writing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how is your relationship with your editor? I mean, do I've you never guys met this person, and and I think that um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm LinkedIn friends with one of them, but I don't I don't know who it necessarily goes to when I send it in. I send it to my oh. my publisher. His name is Gary at Seven Press. Great guy. Got me started doing all this, really. Um, I send it to them. They use their red pen, send it back to me. Of course, it's Microsoft Word, so it's it's a red font, but still. Uh, and then, yeah, I go from there. So it's I don't have a what I would call a wonderful relationship with them. It's not bad. It's just that I don't know who they are most of the time. So if okay. I, I don't know if it's been the same person that's done all the books. And I, I can't remember her name, but she's very nice. She's young. She's like 30. So... Oh. Yeah, she does a really good job. Well, can Doc, since we have you here, can you bring us on your side of the this whole uh, endeavor? Editor. And, you know, the way I treat them is I read them. I send it back with suggestions like, this needs to go here or here. And I try and give the authors enough so that they can develop part of a chapter out of it or even the rest of the chapter. Um, and then that also adds to the word count. So, I mean, Jeff will tell you, I find, found, and I used to do this with Jeff all the time. It's like, you know, you need to do this and this and, you know, or like with Scott Baker, you know, it's like uh, Alyssa was a nurse. She would have recognized this. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you've got to change this and this and this. And they get, you know, suddenly they can get another 500 words or a thousand words or, you know, sometimes several chapters because it takes it gives them a different idea i don't just red pen it i do do all the corrections um i'm used to grading papers i mean i've been a university professor for 30 35 years so mm -hmm. yeah, I've, yeah, I've actually to... laid back on writing here recently just to give her hands time to recover from all the freaking corrections <laughs> all she's the in my I, I invested in red ink and i became a millionaire yeah, of Jack. <laughs> I'm sure Wendy, my editor, would probably really wish that I'd take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately for her, I'm on my fourth book and I have like major blockage. I've got like, I, I'm, I'm so like, I don't know, I, I don't know where else to go. So I started or I'm working on three other projects that I already have half, you know, started. So I'm trying to just step away from my fourth book so that I can at least kind of get an idea of where I want them to go. Cause sometimes if you step away and then go back, it works and makes sense. I don't know. Well, they call it a chasing the squirrel. 
Now, Rich, do you do that? My you hamster's that half dead. It's it's not a good thing. <laughs> I take care. I take care of squirrels from a distance, buddy. I don't choose. Fuck. <laughs> I was talking to Doc about publishing mine, doing all that, but my computer got the blue screen of death. Oh and no! Everything. Is there oh, any way no. to cover that? I'm not a technical guy. So yeah, as long as it's not a hard drive problem. <laughs> well, as long as your hard drive didn't freeze up, you can yep. get it. You just right. pull out the hard drive, hook it up to another rig, and you're good to go. Yeah. Right. Right. It's the hard drive. And even then, you can bring it to a place, Lee, and, and they can get the data off it. But that's that. Now you're talking, it's like like four or five dollars a gig. It's it's expensive. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, but Lee. You, parents who, you know, talk to a local university. They have like um, CIS courses, computer information courses. A lot of times those kids are geniuses yeah. and they can yeah. come up and recover stuff. I mean, thanks, you know, Leah. I have I one of those in the house. Of I have a husband that can help you. <laughs> yeah. I have started finally backing up my stuff on a little thumb drive. Uh, so, yep. I mean, that might be That's a good smart. investment for you. <laughs> This was a terabyte for like 20 bucks on Amazon. Yep. Uh -huh. So I've, I, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm waiting to get enough where I just decide that I need that external hard drive and or that external storage and hook up my stories from there. But um, yeah, I have them on my computer and on the thumb drive. Just, do you, Jen, do you write in Microsoft Word? Yes. So do you, is, that, it, is it new? Yeah. So you, it, you've got cloud storage. Yep, so yeah, that's yep, what I, I use. Yep, I use what the same else? thing. It's got the little cloud. Whatever storage. the heck it's called. The storage, whatever the heck yeah. it's called. So I, I, I can say Watch Samsung keeps having sales on their externals. I've got uh -huh. some of them. And they go up to like four terabytes and six terabytes. Wow. And they're lightning fast. I mean, yeah. Um, because I'm leaving one department at the university and going to another i wanted to capture everything off of my two computers i had at that office because yeah i lose them when i go to the other department yeah um i think it took me 20 minutes yeah to that's important to me because i am very impatient <laughs> oh, figure. really and, and you know what so if i can't if i can't get past the first five minutes of a movie oh. That's what the it eagle. is. True. Eagle. There's, the eagle. Eagle. There's no eagle. point. Oh, it's the almost eagle. the end of the show. Convert. We got one eagle. Oh, Rich, I am so sorry that you didn't get to see a fly, fly through here today. For some reason, we, we never nobody felt compelled to flip the bird. I don't understand no, that. No, no, no. Until just show. now, Jack. two minutes before the end. <laughs> the so hell, Rich, is um, I actually had a question. Um, actually about your series uh you were saying you were possibly stopping at like book eight um have you thought about writing kind of um standalones or uh books off your series that are basically about the characters like each oh character? yeah yeah so th the first one there i, I want to do it about ship but everybody else wants it about billy and dallas so I, 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 want, I want to, I, I may, I'm behind you on the ship. I'm yeah. definitely behind you on the ship. Yeah. yeah. I, and that's I, I, all that I, matters. Uh, so well, one of the things that I had to do, Kristen, is I had to separate the main character from everyone else mm -hmm. uh, in order for him to be alone. He has to be alone for certain things because, you know, first of all, it's much, it's much more terrifying when you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. And secondly, when he's alone, everybody else can be looking for him and that can generate any, any amount of stories that I want. So mm -hmm. there's that. Billy is just batshit crazy. And for me, also being batshit crazy, super easy to write about. So I think Billy will probably be the first one that I do. But Billy and Dallas are, uh, Dallas is sort of the opposite of crazy. He's just, uh, he's like a hillbilly redneck Texas guy. And he's one of my favorite characters. I absolutely love Dallas. And the two of them together are just chaos. So it's, okay. I, I think that's going to be the first one that I do. But yes, that that is actually, believe it or not, already in the works. Awesome. That's cool as hell. Well, holy hold, shit. Hold on. You, I know okay. we're almost done. I got to put this in here. I can't believe this. I, I, I know this show went fast. It did. It did. So, it really freaking did. Rich, I looked we, up we, some of your bios. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. No. 
Okay, oh, so hey, real listen. quick, hey, uh, Dungeon Dan, so you don't feel like you're pressured right now, I do have this thing set for two hours, so, and Richard's not here to bitch because it's time for the show to end. So, if it goes over, case, it goes over. I'm just going to talk real slow. <laughs> That's how we do it here in the Damn South it's... anyway, boy. Okay, so so get this is the stuff I find out about Rich. You apparently, in your 20s, was a flight instructor. Correct. That's terrifying. Wow. <laughs> in your 20s. Wow. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Um, you backpack South America. Correct. You climbed Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu, I did, yeah. Wow. Machu Picchu. Wow. Okay, that's that's a whole new show because I have to hear about that. Um, you moved to Norway just to travel around Norway. No, I, I moved to Norway for work, actually. Oh, okay. I, uh, that, that's a whole other story, but I, I lived there for uh, 17, 18 months for work. That wow. had to been awesome. Yeah, Norway's that was great. badass. Uh, it, yeah, that was... It was one of the best times of my life. I was young. I was single. Uh, I the the company was paying the bill. It was oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Three <laughs> days. Here we go. And so, <laughs> while I was in Four Norway, days. I was able to purchase a uh, an interrail pass because I had lived there for long enough. Uh, and, and basically, what that is is it's a train pass that's good in every country for, except the one you buy it in. Uh, and so I I took advantage of that. It and said went, you went three continents. Yeah, uh, just with that pass, I went with three continents. Yeah, but I've been, I've been elsewhere. I like South America was great. I went to Australia. I got some great pics in Australia. Uh, Southeast and Asia you was lived. wonderful. You actually survived <laughs> Australia. Yeah, I did. Wow, good Australia thing. is as long as you stay out of the outback, you're fine. I've been there a few times. Well, that's I love we Australia. Were, we were in the outback. So. They were in it. See, yeah. see? The is I got. I got close, but you know, <laughs> for a country where everything wants to kill you, I was, I had, I chickened out. Come yeah, on. Shit. You just, yeah, so when you guys really are done with this, look up a, what a mouse spider is. And that oh. little bastard bit me while I was in Australia. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. A mouse yeah, that was, that was spider? A mouse spider. Uh -huh. Yeah. So do you guys know what a funnel web spider is? Yeah. Yes. It's the same thing, but it's a little smaller. Oh, uh -huh. so, they're even like, sneakier then. They can get, yeah, well, he was in my boot, right? So, we were in a tent and opened up the tent. I grabbed my boot and I shake the boot out because I'm not stupid enough to put my foot in the boot because it might be a spider. The spider fell out of the goddamn boot, landed on my foot, and bit me. Oh, <laughs> son of a bitch! Yeah, exactly. So he yeah. paid for it, though. I'm in. Little I'm fucker. in the the American version of Australia. I'm in Arizona. I have to check my husband. I have to check my husband's shoes before he moves on. Yes, yeah. scorpions. scorpions. Lots of tarantulas. <laughs> yeah. I don't, know. I, I don't like spiders, but big, I'll big be snakes. honest, the camel spider scared the fuck out of me, man. Those things are crazy looking. They're mm. big. Uh, the bigger they uh, get, they're though. nasty, but they're, uh, they're not venomous. Like, no, they, but uh, still, you, you, you see one and you turn into a little girl. Oh, you're like, no, oh. no. Do this too, oh. so yeah. Just, Wait, no, now, are you talking about the ones that are uh, usually found in like crawl spaces and shit, like the big bulbous body with the long legs? And look it up online, camel spider. Look no, up camel spider. They're, they're, okay. they're in the Middle East. Uh, okay, because yeah, I was looking at was... uh, arachnid. It's actually not even a spider, I don't think. It's a scorpion. Well, it's about <laughs> okay. as big as a small dog, anyway. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was thinking about camel crickets because I know a lot of people um, forget yeah. about those damn things. But out of all these different bios, Here's the one. Here's the one thing that I found the most interesting, because I think it's code. Practicing chemist. Are, are we talking, Rich? Are we talking? Uh, no, <laughs> no. So do you remember that place that sent me to Norway? Yeah. I work for a company called Battelle. Uh, it's a wonderful company out of Ohio, but we're, I'm in a I'm a sort of a splinter faction, and we're in Norwell, Massachusetts. And I actually work. My main job is to work on a gas chromatograph and mass specs and people will send us clients will send us stuff from around the world samples from around the world and basically what we do is tell them what's in it and how much wow yeah. that's interesting wow. stuff that's so you good. are pretty smart oh hell no i'm a moron but they we can use you know, i don't know i can't tell people <laughs> they, Dallas. they oh. sent me some stuff and they were like what's in this dirt i'd be like i don't know brown <laughs> dirt dead <laughs> people you know, you know, i don't brown. know <laughs> i just Wait, found your bios funny. to be very interesting um, yeah. and it just adds to the mystique 
of the Rick, Rick Baker look. <laughs> He's going right you're back an, to the Rick Baker look. Yeah, you're yeah. you're an interesting man, Rich. You are an oh, interesting yeah, man. <laughs> you know, and the thing is. I mean, he's he's obviously on the list that we all have of the authors that should have something somewhere on TV and yes. a movie. Hundred percent. Wouldn't that be nice? Hundred percent. It, it just feels like we meet so many people like Rich right yep. here that are so talented, so good, completely get get overlooked for whatever reason. No. Not that it's who knows who couldn't be that. Nah. No way, couldn't be. I think man, Rich has earned us another show. I think we should bring him back, and maybe we'll thought? bring Gamboa and Baker in to help derail. Oh him my a god, that'd be great! <laughs> that yes. would be a great a show. Great show. That, that would be, be fun. But now, considering that, that we fun. were trying to get Rich on just you know about a year ago, you know, it's like to finally get you on the damn show and you survive. You're you're still with us. Check your pulse. Check your pulse. You're still yeah, here. Check it. Well, things. Things are a little easier for me now. I'm less busy than I was. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still busy, but uh, I, I love doing these things. Um, so anytime you guys want me to come back, it, uh, and I can just come and shoot the shit, too. That We can do that anytime you want. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. All right, let's put you up for tomorrow at 9. I'll say <laughs> we're all time looking for a, a guest co-host. You know, like if Jen has a, an appointment somewhere and Angel's got stuff to do for the neighbors and Doc can't make it, she's at a party, you know, getting her <laughs> on, you know, <laughs> when all that stuff's I, happening. We're like you know, working. <laughs> we'll call it that. Yeah. It works for me. But so, yeah, from time to time, we do need fill-ins. You know, come in, add to this cast. You see the screen. You can't miss it. I, I like yeah. to have a bunch of people, a bunch of people that like each other, first off. That's the most important part. Oh, yeah. All on the screen at the same time so we can all just fucking hang out and just do a show <laughs> like this one. And, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up because a certain skinny person wearing a Wicked Awake by Meryl David uh, long sleeve T-shirt starting to get really fucking hungry. I knew you were there. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I figured the other fat guy be involved in that. Yeah. But anyway, y'all know what I like to do. I do it every single week. Do it every single show. Kristen Benson, where can everybody find you? Back bar. Okay. You can find me on uh, Amazon under Key Vincent. And you can find me <laughs> Facebook. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> awful. Dance, dance a dick. He's awful. Um, he is. He's terrible. I hate him. Yeah. We'll fire okay. him eventually. It's not you can yet. Find me on uh, Instagram, uh, Threads, and TikTok, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Sure. Jen, <laughs> Amato, Potato, Tomato, Amato, are you fucking kidding me? Where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. I um, look under JL Folk, F O U L K. Um, I oh, have you. a new <laughs> I have a new website, uh, JL Folk Um, where I have uh, books and various other items that I have up for um, sale, sing, signed books and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just drop me a line. You can message me, um, message me at jlfolkauthor at gmail.com if you just want to chat. And right now I am waiting. My I have my third book out for pre-order, um, the group Aaron. I already got so, mine. Thank Hi. you. Thank you. Thank you. Check it out. And um, I am in the middle of writing four different books, which one of them is including work number four for the group series, my first series. So I pretty much just, you know, that's pretty much it. JL <laughs> anywhere <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> Normally, I'm the rambler, but on this occasion, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah today, blah, 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 blah. Diary yeah, of the Mouse. Went Sorry. Into 10. Yeah, just fine. <laughs> well, let's see if Angel can top that. Angel Ramon, my lead, my brother, my friend. Where can everybody find you? Yeah, you can find me on Amazon at Angel Ramon. You can find me on Facebook on Angel Ramon. You can find me every, say, every Saturday with these wonderful bastards. Even you, Dungeon Dan. Thank you. <laughs> There you go. There goes the eagle. I got an eagle. 
Yep, there you go. Because I'm loving my tent. Well, right, and right now, uh, I'm I'm pleased to announce that the final book of my series, Pia Canals and Rats 4, is out for pre-order right now. So you can go get that right now. And I'm working on that. Uh, I'm, I'm also working on it. I'm about 80% of the way done with that. So, Jack, you'll be uh, reading it for me, editing it, and using your web pen magic on that. And then from then on, uh, I'll be working on a new series, uh, Ken of Frogs and Reptiles. Again, it'll be set in Puerto Rico nice. because that's why my... Not? Uh, I know. I'm of the, I'm of the islands. And the, the, he's, I, he's into creature horror right now, man. I am not hating uh-huh. on Don't it. even I stop him. It. Let him go. Yeah, let it go. Yeah, exactly, Dungeon. There you go. And that's about it. Well, that is freaking fantastic. All right, now, Dungeon Dan... You're stuck like I am. You actually have something published. So where can yeah. everybody find you? Find me on Amazon. And this is exciting, but I have a new gutter to pass in down on 8th Street. Come by and, <laughs> you know, take a piss. Pokey, pokey. <laughs> and I am still working on that first novel. I've I've hit on some gold and it's expanding. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. All right. Doc Freed, are you still taking like, you know, editorial jobs on? Are you working on stuff like that right now? Could people actually contact you if they want to get something edited? Of course they can. You can reach me at doc at abo arts, A-B-O-A-R-T-S, Aboriginal Arts. My mates from Australia dot com or at Facebook just under Doc Freed, F-R-I-E-D, all lowercase and I am finishing grading papers today, so I will be taking on stuff and going through stuff, like for Jack. Um, after that, <laughs> we're, we're going to get terrified. Stuff no, yeah, you should. Be. Yeah, I'm getting another roll to check from Red Ink. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it! All right. <laughs> Lee Edwards, I know you don't feel like you have anything to hype, but you actually do because you do a lot for the uh, handicapped community, the uh, handicapped community uh, that want to get out there in the outdoors, go help people that want to go hunt, go do stuff like that. Man, first off, drop the Facebook, and then second, throw a few uh, friends of yours out there that could also help. Um, You can find an adaptive world outdoors. Um, we send a lot of people out hunting, fishing, a bunch of different stuff we can do. Um, I also do stuff for missing people in uh, the Mansfield area. I have a page for that. And I also help run a page for indigenous uh, women missing from around the country. So I do a lot of stuff like that for people and stuff like that. That's awesome. And, so I just... Uh, Gavin's death kind of affected me a little weirdly, where I now, I went back to work, so I make teeth money now, after having two soldier surgeries, and I'm starting to send people off gifts and stuff of what they could really need, and what they can really use, and I just think you got to try to make it a better world, Yes. and saying they have to kind of write a book about zombies eating people, but, you know, how about <laughs> Hey, uh, it's whatever you know, brings I'm joy. Kind of, you guys know what this is? Mansfield Ritz Formatory. Yep, that's where Shawshank was filmed. Yep. I live right next door to it. And, and part of Air Force of One. Part. Yep. I broke part of the set of Air Force One. Yeah. I did not know it was a fake wall. I, you know where the uh, scene where he's coming out and there's tanks lined up and the generals coming out and they kill him? In the uh-huh. back. That yeah. is a fake, that's a fake wall. And I didn't know that because it looked so damn real. And I tried, I locked myself out of it because I worked here. I ran a haunted house here. And I tried to do, you know that where you jump on a wall and pull yourself up? Yeah. I did that and I went through the wall. <laughs> it was paper mache. Oh, no. I went through oh. the wall and broke their off. Uh... Yeah. Oh, my God. <clears throat> okay. Well, first off, Lee, you do know you just told that to, like, everybody. 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 Like, Everybody who should know. Yeah. Here, I'll show you. If you guys give me a second, I'll show you right where that happened. (laughs) (laughs) He ain't just ashamed of it. He's proud of it. Here's the door that they came out of Air Force One. 
-hmm. And uh -oh. here is the uh, fake gate. And there used to be a wall between that gate and that gate oh. in the movie. And that's the wall I busted and went right through it. Oh, my God. All right, Made so, Rich, door. when uh, you finally do get uh, one of your series ported over to, like, movies or TV series or whatever, don't let Lee on the <laughs> set. <laughs> He's going to build him. I'm a big guy that drives truck. And in, uh, Ron, he has a guy that a guy that drives garbage trucks. That's oh, sure. me and his. He's not calling you Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Let's keep this we're party rolling. Um, oh, no, go ahead, Jen. You was about to say something. I'm, I no, I was just going to say, where can we find you, Rich? Yeah, where's... <laughs> oh, anywhere it's his turn. Sold, Amazon, BookBub, Goodreads, anything like that. And you can, if you want to talk to me, you can go to my Facebook page. I have other social media accounts, but I never, ever go to them. So that's it's not worth your time. I'm not a real big social media guy, even though I, I do post, you know, my otter stuff on uh, Facebook. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to talk to me, get in touch with me on Facebook. I'm very amenable to talking to anybody. Just don't be a dick. No, you can be a dick. He's, be a dick right he's, mo he's mostly but, friendly. He won't bite hard. Just hard. <laughs> not hard. Not hard. Depends. All right, guys. Well, this has been a fun ass show. Okay, yeah, no, we're... no, we're doing this again. You are what? now. You are not giving where you can be found in your little projects. Oh, little again, projects. There's, again. There's, there's that. Yeah, I forget about it because I. All right, fine. I have a short <laughs> story in um, Word Peddler magazine, which mm -hmm. you can find on Amazon. Uh, digital copy, physical copy. I recommend getting the physical copy just so you can rub your face up against it. You know, the... <laughs> wouldn't be my face, buddy. There's gonna oh, rub something on it. Oh my god, oh, baby, mm, pretty sexy. I'm feeling a little frisky up in here right now. Perfect. But uh, yeah, I have uh, the short story Domino, which is based on this goofy cat that keeps running around me trying to act a fool and he's got special powers does some bad stuff to a dog man shit happens it goes down it's a great magazine I've, I've, I've always got pussy running around I'm sorry get over it oh. Oh. she'll can take I it a header I, I, don't, I don't have a collar necessarily but can I pop that I just pop that collar I'm very surprised it took this long yeah <laughs> it fell apart Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Book Asylum. That's Jen, Amato, Potato, Tomato, Amato. That is the one and only Doc Freed. That is Angel Ramon. That is Dungeon Dan, Ubel, Ubel, Ukulele. Just not something. late for dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, that is Lee Edwards popping in as a special guest this week. That is my poet, if you didn't know it, Kristen Benson, over there hanging out. Guys, come back next week. See what kind of... Well, actually, no, wait. No. I'm Don't 30. come back next week no. because it I'm is very Christmas. Christmas. It is Christmas holidays, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So we are going to be chilling. Oh, boy. Oh, thank God. I thought there was going to be a speed up. <laughs> yeah. We, got, we dodged a bullet on this one. There we go. <laughs> chilling like a villain over the holidays. So I hope everybody eats everything they want to eat, mm -hmm. drink everything they want to drink, have a damn good time, be good to each other. For fuck's sake, be good to each other because <laughs> it's getting ugly out there right now. So until we see you guys again. Hey, peace thanks for having me. Fuck. Yeah, thanks we're, for being we're here. So happy it was to awesome. Have you. More than I you know. I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. Thanks a lot. Dude, you rocked. It was a great show. Thanks. Yes. I yeah. enjoyed myself. Definitely. Come back. Right. We look forward to Kristen Vincent. Again.